This is a Momentum Media production. Welcome to Property Showcase, the podcast that brings you closer to the service providers that can inform your decisions about how you buy, manage and research top investment opportunities. Be informed and become a better investor with Property Showcase. Well, good day, everyone, and welcome back to another installment of the Property Showcase. I'm your host, of course, Tom Gilmore, the media and marketing strategist here at smartpropertyinvestment.com.au. Guys, always jumping straight into things here. Today's topic is going to be a little bit more from a research base, but certainly more from, I suppose, what I could potentially call a prop tech angle. And the reason why we're coming down this route is because, I suppose, as an investor, it can be quite tough to buy into state let alone in your own state half the time. But the gentleman I have in the room at the minute, he has developed a business around buyer's agents whereby if you can think of like an Aussie or an aggregator of mortgage brokers that you could potentially go to, we've done similar something here with the buyer's agents. Now, Pete Wargent, who is the director of Buyer's Buyers, you might recognize Pete's name in the media, in business, in the property world. He's no doubt probably one of Australia's most recognized and respected financial and housing market analysts out there in the field. You may also recognize him from uh, Alan Wargent back in the day, a BA advocacy. So uh, I want to call him a veteran. I often feel like veterans have connotations to gray hair. So I'm not going to use that word, but um, no, Pete has been around for some time and uh, he certainly knows what he's talking about. And today he's going to tackle the importance of the reports that buyers, buyers are pushing out to help you investors understand how to buy the right property, how to get all the knowledge and the know-how of what's going on in this crazy heated market at the moment. Pete, how are you going? I'm really good. Thanks, Tom. Yeah, as you mentioned, I seem to have gone from rising star and promising young commentator to veteran of the property industry in about three years. So the grey hairs are catching up with me, sadly, but great to be on as always. Thanks, mate. Look, uh, just looking at the frame here, you, I can't see any grey hairs going, mate, but you certainly got some luscious locks, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, it's been an interesting few years for me. We've got a couple of toddlers these days, so the grey hairs are rapidly encroaching. <laughs> the grey hairs and the wrinkles, mate, that's what it's there for. Every hour of sleep you lose, there's another one that's going to be added. But um, enough of children. We're here to talk about property, Pete, and I'm glad you're here with us today because you certainly do offer a really good insight and angle from an analyst perspective, a property investor yourself, having to been a BA yourself as well. And of course, now today, you know, you're heading up buyers, buyers, which is a really fascinating business itself. Do you want to just give us a bit of an insight as to what you guys actually do? Yeah. So essentially what buyers, buyers does, as the name implies, we work for property buyers, only for buyers, not for sellers. And we look to level the real estate playing field with our national network of expert buyers agents. So we don't just focus on Sydney or Melbourne or Brisbane. We can actually uh, buy anywhere in Australia. So we've got national coverage across all states and territories. Because we use, as you mentioned, a kind of an aggregation model, we do tend to help buyers to save time, stress and money. doesn't matter where they're looking to buy. And because we do a lot of the work with buyers up front in terms of making sure They've got their mortgage finance in place. They know where and what to buy. We'll generally get people a good fee on their buyer's agent as well. So it can work out for the best for the property buyer. It doesn't matter where they're looking to buy in the country. Yeah, certainly. I I look, even I'm just trying to put myself in the shoes of perhaps maybe a first time investor or a new investor who's maybe got two underneath their belt or or potentially they are looking to finally break away into that interstate model, right? I mean, we push that hard here at SPI. We call it buying outside your backyard. That can mean a number of things, but let's call it interstate. But uh, I mean, from my thoughts, I'm immediately thinking, I don't really know whose boots on the ground in Brisbane or in some suburb of the Gold Coast or, you know, some suburb in Perth. There's got to be people and there are, there are buyers agency do work in those areas. And this is obviously a, a great way for what you've created here with buyers, buyers to funnel that. Is that correct? Yeah, that's right. So we put together a national panel of agents and there's like in any industry, there's a range of you know, quality and expertise out there. So what we've done, we've tried to build panel where we've got local expertise in all areas and we've tried to look towards agents with a few years of experience at least ideally Uh, i think the thing um just like in any industry or sector you always have new people coming into the market and that's great but our focus has been uh, on building a panel of people with expertise and experience 
Why did this start? Why did this business start in the first place? Well, it was actually a guy called Doron Pele, who I'd known for some years previously. He used to head up a business called Riskwise Property Research, and we'd done some work together. We actually wrote a report that went to Treasury some years ago on negative gearing. And he, he actually came to me with the idea for a bit like what happened with the mortgage broking sector with AFG and Aussie home loans and mortgage choice, where you got this sort of aggregator model. Well, Doran said to me, what really needs to be done with the buyer's agency sector is for somebody to come along and build a national panel of buyer's agents. And then you can centralize the marketing, the research for the property buyers, and then allocate them to the right buyer's agent on the panel. Because one of the things I know from a dozen years of experience as a buyer's agent myself, you spend half of your time trying to find clients, stepping them through uh, getting them the appropriate financing and structure in place. And you don't actually spend as much of your time as you would like to on what you're really good at, which is buying properties. So we actually solve that problem for buyer's agents as well, because we introduce them to clients who are ready to buy on day one, and they know where and what they want to buy, and they've got the financing in place. So we're just really helping to streamline the whole property buying process. And then the process is becoming more digitized anyway these days. And as you mentioned, we do have some sophisticated AI and prop tech, which actually helps us on the research side of things as well. Yeah, certainly. I want to tackle that point on the research now with you because that is the plus side to what Buyers Buyers is all about as well, in my opinion. And correct me if I'm wrong, this could be the wrong name for it, but it is called Where to Buy, I believe. And this is a report itself that everyone tuning into can actually get their hands on. We're going to include a link within this podcast as well. And I'm sure many other places we can find it too. But the research that goes behind what you guys do is, I would dare I say, fundamental and crucial to helping investors understand whether it be picking the right buyer's agent or finding the right area to buy in or whatever it is it might be. Is that correct? Yeah, that's right. So it's a personalized report and it does use AI and proprietary data that we've got and market intelligence. And it just helps people to determine the best suburbs to buy in based on your unique criteria. So whether you're an owner occupier or an investor, the property type you're looking for, the rental yield you're searching for, and of course your budget, And if you key in those key criteria, the report can just generate a top three suburbs shortlist based on where you're looking to buy and the budget. And with that report, you'll get an in-depth analysis of the suburb, uh, growth forecasts, other key property metrics and risk metrics, cash flow. There's lots in there and it's all available for free. And um, it really taps into the AI side of prop tech, which is something we've been developing for a couple of years now. That's fantastic. Is there anything in there that actually stands out in your mind that, say, other property reports just wouldn't have? Yes. In fact, um, probably the easiest thing to do is actually go and run a report for yourself. It'll be a lot more impressive than me explaining over a podcast. <laughs> and as you said, we'll put the link in there below. But it's very much a top down approach. So, as you mentioned before, particularly if you're a property investor, uh, you don't necessarily just want to be buying in your local suburb or street. You want to be getting exposure to the property markets from around the country. So the free tools actually very much take a top-down approach. So you can get regional and economic analysis of every property market in the country. You can bring it down to the state level and all the way down, in fact, to specific properties. We can actually run for you free valuation reports for any property in the country. So it's a pretty impressive range or suite of tools. Uh, There's also things like suburb risk reports by property type. So there's nothing really like this out there on the market and it's pretty sophisticated stuff. But I think where the value for investors lies in particular, let's say, for example, you've got a $1 million budget and you're thinking of buying a property essentially in Queensland. Well, the report can just spit out the suburbs you should be looking at based on your criteria, your budget, and the yield you're looking for, whether that's in the north side of Brisbane or Gold Coast or Sunshine Coast. And it can save you a lot of time and research because the report will just send you to the right locations to begin with. I'm getting a feeling here of uh, potentially like a fireside chat 
you've got your mates all around you and they're talking about what areas they're talking about or someone's told them on the building site or somewhere in the pub and they've gone, no, 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 you should invest in this suburb. And then all of a sudden you jump on a buyer's buyers, you quickly do the, your own criteria search report and it's going to basically just funnel out all, all these risk assessments, reasons, suburbs you should be buying in, why it's right, why it's wrong. And that's a pretty good follow-up, I think, in terms of the reports that you do generate. If there's an area or a suburb or a particular region that people are, I suppose, searching for, potentially looking to invest in, with that risk analysis, is there like a big sort of red flag that comes up and goes, oh, hang on a second, this isn't a good idea? Do you actually sort of step in and go, this is not a good idea, you shouldn't be doing this? Yeah, so one of the things in our customer charter is that we will always act in the best interest of our clients and of buyers. And this might be somewhat rare, I guess, in the world of real estate, where people are always pushing for more transactions to happen quickly. But you're exactly right. In our suburb risk reports, you can actually key in a postcode and a property type. And if we think there's a big oversupply, or if the data shows there to be Um, an oversupply in the pipeline that will actually be flagged in the report as high risk. And there are some parts of the country where prices have become overcooked and they will also be flagged as high risk. Other areas where the fundamentals are stronger, they will come up as low risk. So it's not really designed to try and push people into any specific property type or location. It is all based on hard statistics and proprietary data. Certainly, but also gives the investor the freedom of choice as well at the end of the day. I mean, it, ultimately, they're in control, right? That's the whole point. Yes, and it's another well, another of the reasons that we actually founded Buyers Buyers in the first place. One of the shortcomings I found of running a small or boutique buyers agency is to a certain degree, it's never a bad time to buy in adverted commas in your local area because you're servicing a certain range of suburbs or regions. And Therefore, it's, it's not really in your interest to ever say that it's a bad time for a person to buy. But uh, obviously, coming at this from a national approach, well, we can be much more discerning in terms of the locations, the suburbs and the property types that might be at the right stage in the cycle to invest in. And we don't have any vested interest in whether people look at Perth or South Australia or Hobart. We can purely give independent advice and research based on what the statistics show. Excellent. That's fantastic. Now, Pete, this is live now, correct? Is that right? People can utilize this tool now? Yeah, absolutely. So if you just jump onto our website, buyersbuyers.com.au, go to the property tools section of the site and you can get access to the where to buy report. But as I mentioned, there's actually a suite of free tools there that you can access completely for free. So uh, yeah, we're trying to um, really revolutionize the access to a lot of this data. I think historically there hasn't been information out there but a couple of the problems have been firstly it's often only available to industry insiders and it can be expensive but also it's actually quite difficult to interpret a lot of information as what we've done here is we've really tried to make it user friendly so anybody who's interested in buying property uh, you can get access to all of this information for free in a manner that actually is kind of self-explanatory and makes life easier. Mate, I'm all about that. I use the KISS method with absolutely everything. So keep it simple, stupid. <laughs> and if it's uh, easy to interpret, which is one of the biggest dramas at the moment, I, I agree within, well, not just the property industry, any industry, right? There's so much research, so much data, and you think to yourself, God, how am I supposed to equate all of this together? But it sounds like obviously this report, given how specialised or boutique it can be to your own personal needs and criteria is fundamental to making this work in the first place. So, and guys, as I said, obviously you can jump onto buyersbuyers.com.au. You can also jump onto the link that's within the bio of this show here on smartbrandinvestment.com.au too, and we'll jump you straight to the report as well. But um, Pete, I just wanted to say thank you so much for joining us, mate. It's actually been a huge insight. So I'm a, a bit of a data nerd myself, and I'm sure probably you are too. And uh, that's often where a lot of the facts lie. So thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, pleasure. Thanks, Tom. It's always great to be on. And uh, yeah, I'm not easily impressed by a lot of things these days. But when uh, Doran came to me uh, with the idea for these reports, I thought they sounded good and they've exceeded my expectations. You can have hours of fun playing around with all the uh, free content there. (laughs) Excellent. Well, I might do that myself right after this. Cheers. Cheers, Pete. Thank you. The information featured in this podcast is general in nature and does not take into consideration your financial situation or individual needs and should not be relied upon. Before making any investment, insurance, tax, property or financial planning decision, 
you should consult a licensed professional who can advise whether your decision is appropriate for you. Guests appearing on this podcast may have a commercial relationship with the companies mentioned.